Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Another video about a billionaire in precious metals? Yep, but this time it's different. Let's explore! You're probably wondering why I'm doing another video about a billionaire prognosticator in terms of uh, precious metals, but it's about this other market. There's another uh, market that he's talking about here that he was right in making a prediction on. And what I find interesting and fascinating about this piece is there's not much talk about where gold is gonna go in terms of the price in, in his talk in this piece from Business Insider. But John Paulson is the billionaire investor I'm referring to, and he was right. He was right about the housing bubble bursting. But him being right about that doesn't necessarily mean he will be right about what's coming ahead or what he's talking about. But his prediction that he's making is not necessarily one of those that is uh, far out there or he's not predicting some massive collapse of sorts. And some of this you may or may not agree with, but I think what he says about gold is quite telling. And this is why he is somebody that I think should be paid attention to seriously. He said that the housing prices could drop, but a decline wouldn't spark another financial crisis like we saw, like what we saw in 2007 and 2008. John Paulson, who called the implosion of the mid 2000s housing bubble, warned that U.S. home prices could slump again but he ruled out a decline sparking another financial crisis. He says, we're not at risk of a collapse today in the financial system like we were before, he told Bloomberg in a recent interview. Housing may be a bit frothy, so housing prices may come down or they may plateau, but not to the extent that it happened. And that's an interesting statement. And I don't even know that I agree with that because um, a lot of the same um, activity is still occurring today that was happening back then. In fact, if you watch the movie The Big Short, they mentioned that, that a lot of what was happening then they're still doing. There's still predatory lending happening, by the way, too. And by the way, I see it every day in some of the scam calls that I get from these loan scammers and trying to perpetuate and, and, and get this money moving and and the like, and you know, it's, it's, it's all over the place. But in the housing market, he's made a statement that some of us may not agree with, and I don't totally agree with it. I don't consider myself an alarmist either, but I do think we're in some serious trouble and we very well may be uh, heading in for a deeper recession and uh, to the point where we may see it as bad or if not worse than 2007 and 2008 which is one of the reasons why we should diversify our portfolios and prepare for what could be coming. And that's why gold is one area of, uh, of savings and insurance policy that we should have. But we'll get to that in a moment with Mr. Uh, Paulson here. Uh, the billionaire investor and Paulson and Company founder explained that about 15 years ago, the mortgage market and banking system were much less solid than today. Well, you know, are they? I don't know. Um, he seems to think so. I don't know. With all the money printing and everything that we've had going on, especially with other ideas and, and things that are working against the institutions that I think are in the market today and regulation as well, he may be coming to it from that angle. But I don't know. I don't think it's as uh, solid as he says it is, but that's just me. Uh, but he may be right. He is, after all, um, probably more in the know about that than I am. But anyways, at the time, many Americans could buy homes without undergoing credit checks or making down payments and often had mediocre credit and lots of personal debt, Paulson said. Moreover, banks were highly leveraged with capital ratios of about 3% compared with between 9 to 12% today, he noted. Plus, they were exposed to big risk not disclosed on their balance sheets. And he makes a good point there, but you know, again, some of the other factors are still happening, I think, to some extent in the housing market. You don't have the degree of poor credit quality and mortgages that you did at the time. 
the banks were very speculative about what they were investing in. They had a lot of risky subprime, high yield leveraged loans. The S&P Case-Shiller Index of National Home Prices has surged by over 40% since the start of 2020, while long-term mortgage rates recently climbed past 6% for the first time since 2008. But I'll stop there and say that a lot of that has not stopped people from buying homes. The prices haven't stopped them and, uh, and neither have these higher interest rates, uh, at least from a report I heard on the radio in recent weeks. Um, U.S. homes have grown more expensive and financing a home purchase has become costlier, creating an affordability problem that could result in a market downturn, especially with people buying these homes and they may not be able to afford them. They may be able to afford them on paper, but they may be overextending themselves. Um, Paulson also took aim at some of his fellow short sellers during the interview. He called them out for hyping up stocks and unwitting retail investors in order to drive up their prices, then stopping the promotion so that the stocks plummeted in value when the seller's short positions paid off. Yeah, sounds kind of scary what's happening there for sure. Uh, the investor pointed to cryptocurrencies as an example. He dismissed as a worthless bubble last year as an example of short selling being risky because it has unlimited downside. Think about that for a moment with cryptocurrencies. Unlimited downside. In other words, there's no intrinsic value with cryptocurrencies. And he's right about that. I like something that's solid, that has intrinsic value. Gold is something that has had that for thousands of years. But we'll get to that here in a moment. Let's talk a little bit more about what he's talking about here. Investors scoffed when Bitcoin hit $20,000 and bet against it, he said, only to watch it more than triple in price to over $60,000 in November. Remember that? He predicted last year that stubborn inflation would lead to higher interest rates, spurring investors to ditch cash and bonds for gold. He noted to Bloomberg that the yellow metal has served as a haven asset this year, given its smaller decline relative to stocks and bonds. So there is the, his outlook for gold. He's understood and recognized that it has uh, declined this year, but it's a smaller decline relative to stocks and bonds. Moreover, he suggested gold could jump in value if the Federal Reserve's campaign of interest rate hikes fails to crush inflation. And that's likely to happen because they're going to have to raise interest rates a lot more and much deeper, I think, in order for them to have an effect. It may be too little too late. If we keep doing these 0.75% or 75 basis point rate hikes in the next couple of times here. He argued that investors would lose faith in the central bank and their long-term inflation expectations would rise, boosting demand for metal as a hedge. And that's if they lose faith in the Federal Reserve. They're going to lose faith in the Federal Reserve notes. Paulson, who converted his hedge fund into a family office in 2020, shorted about $25 million in securities during the mid-2000s housing bubble and scored a $15 billion windfall for his clients. His wager was chronicled in a book called The Greatest Trade Ever, the behind-the-scenes story of how John Paulson defied Wall Street and made financial history. So there it is. So you'll notice here that in this piece, he's not predicting that gold is going to go to the moon, that it's going to skyrocket in price. He basically says that it is serving as a haven asset, a safe haven. It is uh, something that is out there as an insurance policy to protect you against a housing bubble bursting or a decline in the housing market. So he's not causing, he's not calling for the housing market to, to crash. And I don't believe it will either, but I do think it's in trouble. And uh, he's not calling for uh, gold to go to the moon and, and go up some crazy price per ounce. He's just saying that gold is what it is. It is a safe haven and it has served well in that role. And this is why he suggested that gold could jump in value if we see interest rate hikes fail to crush inflation. And that's really what would have to do. Crush inflation, not just, uh, you know, keep it at bay or have it fall back a little bit. So in other words, in the next coming couple of months here, let's say, inflation goes down to 6.8%, whereas last year at this time, inflation was jumping up to uh, 5%. That's an 11.8% increase. 
uh, from two years before. That's a pretty big jump in prices in the consumer price index, which again, remember, that's just an average of the inflation rate throughout these sectors. Most of us understand that if we look at how they used to measure the consumer price index and the rate of inflation, it is definitely well into double digits now by all metrics and all standards. And really that is what we should be looking at to uh, determine what inflation is in this country. Uh, it, we're hurting out there, folks. Wages are not keeping up you know, with the rate of inflation. And uh, gold right now is really at a bargain basement prices when you're taking that into consideration. And or you can look at it as uh, since the pandemic, uh, we've seen a spike up above $1,600, whereas before the pandemic, it was trading around uh, just that or a little under. And so uh, we really are seeing gold uh, in the long run be a wealth preservation device. And this is why I have accumulated gold because it has been definitely the most stable stores of value that we have out there and a stable store of value that you can hold that you can enjoy you can look at uh and it's it's a, it's nice to be able to have that security in your portfolio so there you have it a very interesting uh, piece here by insider business insider and an interesting guy mr paulson is i don't know what his other views are. I don't necessarily totally agree with him about, about uh, his analysis, but I think it's something worth listening to. And uh, I think we should consider it. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>